Um, hello, I'm Philip Wang. I'm one of the co-founders of Wang Fu Productions. And Wang Fu Productions is, I guess, at the as most people know, it's a YouTube channel. Uh, we have like over a million subscribers, and we make short films and sketches and music videos, and people watch them. It started back before YouTube existed. Imagine that very dark, dark period. Basically, we I was in college, and uh, Wes and Ted, um, the three of us were in a class together, and we just started working on projects together. I had already been making just some fun videos, and I wanted to share them with my friends. Um, and there was no video hosting website, so we just made a website and put a link up there for people to download the video. It's just like friends pass it on to other friends, and I guess it, like back then, seeing a video online was unique and new. Like now, every, now it's just part of life. But back then, this was like in 2004, which isn't even that long ago. To see people online making videos was was very new and different. And the fact that it was Asians doing it was even more weird. So a fan base started growing that way. People started passing on our videos, primarily during like finals week when everyone was really bored and on their computers. Um, and that's how we started. And we just kept it going. As the fan base grew, we just kept trying to adapt and grow with our fans and grow with technology. And that's the gist of it. I guess it's, it's definitely changed a little bit uh, because um, YouTube has definitely given us um, a much greater platform to be seen, not just by other Asian Americans, but um, just, you know, by people of other cultures too. Like the technology has allowed us that, that, that venue to get our work out there and essentially our faces out there. I remember going into college, like so basically around your age, and all we had was, or all I had was like Jackie Chan and Jet Li. I still, I still love them, but that's like that was the only time way you could see Asian people in media. But with YouTube, uh, it really allowed people to see that wow, there's Asian people, you know, just as regular people, not kung fu artists, not eight foot tall freaks of nature playing basketball. Like we're just regular people too. We don't have accents. We don't all do kung fu. Um, and with like YouTube, like. You know, uh, it showed that we can sing, we can dance, we can, you know, be funny. Um, so it was uh, really awesome that YouTube came around and that our our community built on top of that. And was um, a lot of a lot of great talented people came out from there. And that I don't think would have been seen without YouTube. So it's definitely changed in that sense now. Yeah. I mean, I think back when I was in high school, the stereotype was still like Asians are are nerdy and. and and good students, which I still think is sort of there, but I, I hear I think now it's more like, or like, oh, Asians can all dance, or Asians can all sing. Like, so I think I think that's good. Like, you know, like now we're we're it's at least the the stereotypes expanding to other like cooler things. Now, yeah, we can all dance and stuff. <laughs> um, I think it's diff different inspirations and for different things. Like, um, I mean, just keeping Wong Fu Productions going and alive. Um, is honestly, you know, people like you, just the fans, the supporters. I wish I could have this conversation with everyone that watched the videos because we're really grateful to them. We're just a few guys that like to tell stories and the fact that so many people enjoy what we do, follow us and are rooting us on, it's like it's, we're so lucky, you know, and um, that, that definitely is a, is a huge inspiration, motivation for us to continue because we don't want to let you guys down either. And in terms of like, our stories, I think um, most of the time we just draw from personal experience. Uh, a lot of our stories are just, you know, friends' experiences or things that happened in my life. And you just, we just think about it. I think, I think, you know, we, as, as we go through our daily lives, there's inspiration everywhere. And we just kind of expand on, on one joke that your friends told. It's like, hey, let's make an entire story about that or a little sketch about it or, or something that happened with a, a relationship. It's like, hey, let's, let's think about what happened there and try to expand on that too. So it's just a lot of daily life or personal experiences. Um, I think if it's like for Asian Americans, challenge might be like a cultural challenge in, in terms of like what our families and our parents expect out of us or what's generally accepted by society of what Asians are supposed to be. Um, 
I'd say that the fact that we have things like YouTube, we have tools like DSLRs that are affordable. You know, you don't need huge equipment to like go make a movie. You can write a song with some like some computer programs, or I mean, not even like with your flip phone or something. I don't know. Like, this the technology is is readily available to a lot of us, and we shouldn't take that for granted. And we should use those opportunities to to just express ourselves. Yeah, I mean, like I think there's there's opportunities all the time. It's more about are you going to allow yourself to you know in a sense be vulnerable and like you know put yourself out there for people to be seen to to see you. And and it's not even about trying to be seen. Like if it's it could just it's good for it's good for your own soul to express even if it's just you by yourself in your room to just get things out there. So I would just encourage people to. Not be too self-conscious, and if you feel like you need to to say something or write something or shoot, you know,、uh, a short film or or a photo or record a song, just do it. Even if it sucks, I I made a ton of sucky stuff, and, but it still feels good to get it out, you know. So, I guess I would encourage that to like all people. I think a lot of Asian Americans would say, "Oh, I can't do that because I have to focus on school." Or, I have to, my my job is going to take me in a different direction, but I mean that's what hobbies are for, right? I mean I wish I could pursue dancing, but my my realistic job is Wong Fu Productions, and it's actually you know very stressful and a lot of work. But I still find ways to you know indulge myself in that when I can. So if there's like a kid out there who is stuck in pre med or accounting or something that they don't truly love, you know you can still have fun. On you know, just doing your own hobby on the side, you know, just do it. It's really it's like it's it's an old slogan, but it it's it's lasted so long because it's true. Just do it, you know.、Yeah. I think it's better than it was ten years ago, largely in part of due to like YouTube and people are definitely more aware.、Um, but there's always there's always some case that you can point to that says, oh look, you know, we're being suppressed or we're being misrepresented. Or this is unfair. That yeah. I, those 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 things suck. It sucks that it still happens. What's more more important is not about just complaining about it, but it's more like what's your response going to be? Are you going to try and actively do something to make make a change, or are you just going to complain and say this world sucks? People are racist to us, and that's it. So my response has always been, yeah, there's there's definitely still very unfair representations or misrepresentations or even straight up racism in the media. I mean, we need we need the whistleblowers, that's for sure. But we also need people to just make try and make a difference in their own way. And like for us, Wang Fu, like we're just be trying to like sue every everyone that's out there, or you know, tell everyone to like get angry at these companies or or, or movies or whatever. But we'll try and just be a good example for ourselves, be the change that way, you know. So it's, it's just different responses. But no, there's there's definitely still a lot of Ignorance out there for sure. When I'm in front of the camera, I'm not trying to be like, okay, I have to be really Asian American in this, because I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm just me, and I think that's just by default. I I'm going to end up being Asian American just by being myself, and I don't really know what specific ingredient or or characteristic that is that makes me Asian American. But it's just it's just being myself, and I mean I am conscious that I'm not I don't ever want to do like accents. That's for sure. I mean unless unless there's a real purpose for it, but there's a time and a place where I, I mean we have friends that that do it for their videos, and I think it, it works、um, you know when it needs to. But、uh, personally, I don't I don't really want to do that. I just want to show that we can be like normal, cool. I mean then I'm not cool, so I end up being just awkward. So yeah, we're just awkward, we're just normal people, you know, like so. That's that's what I try to to portray, I guess. It's one of the、uh, committees. It's I guess Obama has different minority committees where he meets with them to see how his policies are affecting、um, those those communities or those demographics. So the Asian American、um, committee, we one of the, the the one that the guy who works for Obama directly is also a very big supporter of us and a fan of what we do. So when it came time for invitations to be sent out to To、uh, community leaders, he I guess we're a community leader, so he invited us, and we didn't actually know we were going to meet Obama. We just knew that we were going to the White House, and you know, just a big honor. You know, we went, and then we found out that day that we were actually going to get to meet him, and we were just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. 
it was like lining up for Mickey Mouse, you know, a long line, security, and we had like 10 seconds with him, but it was cool. He was really nice. <laughs> a lot of it's like a li life, what's my life story? Um, I, uh, I think I had a very Asian American upbringing. Um, you know, my parents were immigrants, so there was a lot of like cultural clash um, between what, what they grew up with and what they're used to. And then, but you know, like, you know, I had all the same, you know, pressure from my parents to do well in school and getting weird punishments and being spanked and all that stuff that Asian kids joke about and, you know, cheap parents that, you know, want to reuse like everything or find like the good deals. And I mean, it's, it's like, it's like that. And then, you know, I had, I had a, I had a group of Asian friends in, in high school as well and friends from, you know, not Asian friends too, but I definitely was closest to, I think, my Asian friends just because we had similar upbringings and similar families, so we could relate to each other. Pretty Asian American upbringing. <laughs> What's up, ICS20? This has been the most amazing and exciting interview you have ever seen in your life. Thanks for watching. Philip from Wonka Productions. Go find us on YouTube. Tell your friends. <laughs> WonkaProductions.com. Just kidding. <laughs>